Fools Nation, do we still need to attach an asset to get rid of Zack? Or I guess the better question is that, do we really want to get rid of Zack at this point if the market is not there for him? We're going to talk about this right after this. This is your home for all things Chicago Bulls. Join the conversation. You're listening to Chicago Bulls Nation. All right, Bulls Nation. So there are reports that, you know, the Kings are interested. Uh, apparently, Utah Jazz and 76ers said we are not interested at all. Uh, I find it hard to believe with the Kings because they just signed Malik Monk for four years. 80, like $78 million. Let's say 80, right? They're going to pay Malik Monk $20 million to come off the bench. Um, I guess that's possible, you know. But if they're going to start, let's say, Malik Monk, and they are still going to go after Zach. So how, what is the lineup going to be? Um, is it going to be Fox, Monk, Zach, Keegan, and DeMontis? Uh, doesn't seem like a very good lineup to me. You know, like you, you lack versatility in there and, and mostly defense. Monk is, you know, pretty good defensively. Uh, Fox can get a steal here and there. But ideally, you wanted somebody who was, you know, a little bit more defensive stout in there. But hey, it's possible, right? But I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear that maybe we don't need to attach a an asset to get rid of Zach or uh, make no mistake about it. All right. Like I want to get rid of Zach. But at the same time, if that means we're going to have to attach an asset, do we really have to? You know, with, with a trade for Giddy, it's the bull signaling that, you know, maybe next year we're going to tank for Cooper Flag. Uh, trust me, I don't want to tank either, but I know that that is the right thing to do. Uh, as somebody who watched the Bulls, tanking doesn't mean we're going to get number one. We might get number seven again. Who knows, right? But if we are going to get, we don't have an asset. If if that means we're going to trade Zach and Ayo Nusumu to Utah just to get rid of Zach, then I don't want to get rid of Zach because I don't want Ayo to be a part of that. If we are not actively trying to win that, that you know like if we're just putting out there maybe we're not gonna tank but also we're not gonna put our best effort to get the best players out there or get the players you know like that is easy for for ak because they don't know how to get best players anyway but i think what they need to try to avoid now is attach assets to get players that might not work you can get players that might not work but do not give away assets by that, I mean, don't do the, the Nikola Vucevic that you've done where you gave away two draft picks uh, to get Vuce, which it didn't work. We tried that, didn't work. We tried to give one, uh, you know, top 10 protected, which is, you know, th that is well worth it to get De DeMar DeRozan. But now if, if because we, we, we already don't have Alex Caruso. So if it means getting rid of Zach, but attaching Io or maybe Kobe or the 11th pick, then let's not do this, all right? Let's just keep Zach, let DeMar walk, uh, resign Patrick Williams, and roll with those guys. If we lose, then we get a high draft pick. We keep our pick. Uh, not only did not we did not give away the 11 pick, but we are going to retain the pick for next year that is owed to San Antonio. So there's two positives here. Keeping Zach might mean that you keep two picks. Keep Think of it that way. Right, like, cause if we keep Zach, then we're gonna keep on losing. Because think about it, the idea of Zach playing the three with Vooch and Kobe White and Josh Giddy, my God, we're gonna be so terrible on defense. It's not gonna be funny. It is gonna be unwatchable. And the the upside to that is, hey, we might have a better draft pick next year, right? And then that's one year removed from Zach. Uh, and his contract so maybe he's he'll be easier to offload next year because the, the team who's going to acquire him only has to pay him two more years and he is a massive expiring after those two years so in that sense you know that might be positive in there then trying to compete again and then getting rid of a draft pick like i can't see a scenario where I'm going to be, unless you're getting a high caliber uh, young player where it's okay to get rid of picks and or the sumo just to get rid of Zach. Like, why are we so much in a hurry to get rid of Zach? It's not like we're going to 
be a playoff team next year right like make no mistake about it i do not like zach to be in this team but if that means for a better future for the bulls then so be it so be it uh i i think demar is gone like i, I think the moment they got josh giddy they signaled that we are not gonna even you know we're not gonna try we're not gonna purposely lose uh but we are gonna prioritize youth and the future of this bulls team whatever that means if that means losing but there's gonna be development moving forward and honestly i do like that direction we tried this core for three years so but going back to the topic i am not i feel differently now uh getting rid of zach because if the bulls owner and, and we know this like they're gonna try to sell tickets so they might even still try to compete and again if you're gonna do that so be it fine but please do not attach any assets if you want to get rid of zach for zach zach levine for zach collins and jordan clarkson fine i'm okay with that there's out of those two there's really no positives in there uh they are not going to help us compete but i'm okay with it because we are not giving away asset if you want to trade zach levine for chris paul and moses moody i'm okay with that too or, or salary filler so basically we're not you know expiring contracts whatever i don't mind that as long as we don't give away asset i am okay and also there's there might be another positive here like if you keep zach and maybe he puts up good numbers again and we're still a bad team you know he's gonna feel more attractive to a team that is trying to compete and maybe looking for that boost off the bench you're halfway through the season you only have to pay him you know like x number maybe we can trade him at the deadline i am not in a mode now where i am positive that the bulls would compete even for a play-in tournament next year uh of course that's still to be seen you know with the the moves that they're about to get we might get you know paul george for all i know and then they might pair him up with the martyr rose and stranger things have happened I highly doubt it with this front office because they're not capable of, you know, pulling off a, a they've shown time and time again that they're not capable of pulling off moves like that. But if we go, if we stay in this trajectory where we're going to acquire young assets and we're going to develop them kind of like Giddy, like Giddy, Io, Pat, Patrick Williams, uh, Kobe White, I'm okay with losing. I'm okay as long as we don't get rid of of any more assets that we already don't have we have that 11 pick we have io please do not touch those guys or kobe do not just to get rid of zach at this point there is no positive in attaching an asset just to get rid of zach none i mean i guess unless you're getting anthony edwards you know or, or some young talent out there then go ahead please by all means but let's say just to get john collins and and you know jordan clarkson you're gonna get rid of zach and io the sumo there just makes no sense but let me know in the comments what do you think do we need to get rid of zach at any cost did you just want him out of the team because he he ruins you know the growth of these young fellows let me know in the comments thank you for watching subscribe to the channel if you're a bulls fan and i'll see you guys in the next video